Hello, and welcome to the meeting of the Rotary E-Club of District 7710 for Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. I'm Kathy Rodka, E-Club of District 7710 President. Thank you for joining us. Our guest speaker for this evening is Dr. Richard Edelman. Rotarian Lonnie Irvin will be introducing Dr. Edelman this evening. Lonnie? Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Edelman is well known and respected in the medical and, and Raleigh community. Yeah, he's practiced medicine for over 30 years after he received his MD degree from Northwestern University in Chicago. Uh, he completed three years of residency uh, family medicine at St. Joseph Hospital in Denver. Dr. Adolon is a board certified in family practice in geriatric medicine. He has served as the chairman of the Department of Medicine for Rex Hospital, a member of the UNC system, as well as served as chief of the Department of Medicine at Raleigh Community Hospital. Uh, Dr. Adelman uh, organized the first Jewish health fair in Raleigh more than 20 years ago. He is currently working on a project to bring health care to underserved population in Raleigh. Uh, he enjoys and, and uh, he enjoys hobbies including uh, boating, biking, tennis, running, and hiking. Um, a dedicated athlete, Dr. Edelman has uh, run numerous marathons, including the Boston Marathon, and promotes healthy lifestyle um, for its patients. So um, that's the readable part. So Dr. Edelman is actually my physician, and uh, I don't know how many of you have a physician that you talk to. I get to talk to my physician. We talk about, I mean, anything and everything, really. Um, he's a Rotarian, I believe. He's a Rotarian. And so um, he's actually made several contributions to eFusion. And he actually helped me start a new project. Um, and he's uh, committed to doing every quarter books. We found some at-risk kids um, in, the community, in the rural communities that we provide books. Um, we just purchased our first um, selection for ages, I think, five to, five to nine. So he's supporting um, all kinds of things in the city. Uh, great physician. Actually, my wife and I both, and uh, my son should be transitioning to him real soon. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'll let you take it away, Dr. Edelman. Well, thank you, Lonnie. That's wonderful. And yes, I take new patients. Everything else I've been in the same location, as Lonnie said, for the last 34 years. And I loved hearing uh, Will talk about uh, uh, going around uh, say, you know, doing his dentistry. Will, why don't you, un let's see you again. Uh, anyways, all you that, uh, that uh, stopped your video, uh, start your video so I can see you. There you go. And uh, so we can see you, all that kind of stuff. And so anyways, uh, let me, my wife, Jane Pinsky, she goes around giving speeches all the time. She uh, lobbies for all kinds of good causes at the state legislature. And she always says, Tell them what you want to say, say it, and then, and then tell them again what you want to say. So the answer to all health problems, if you want to know, is fruits, vegetables, exercise, and love. That's the answer. So whatever you ask, ask me, the answer is going to be fruits, vegetables, exercise, and love. That's the answer, okay? And by love, I mean community. I mean things like rotary. I mean spirituality. I mean all this stuff. So that's the answer for all questions. Now, the topic for this meeting used to be uh, everything from A to Z. Now, that was when Zika was around. People don't really talk about Zika much. and uh, But I'll talk about all kinds of different things. But really... I want to focus on COVID-19 because that's the subject of the day and everybody's interested in that. And feel free to ask questions about COVID. Let me just give you, to start with, just give you the stats from today. And this is really interesting to me about the stats. In North Carolina, uh, 9,500 cases, 342 deaths. Wake County, which has done, um, North Carolina has done amazing well. Wake County has done unbelievably well. We have uh, 769 cases, 15 deaths, which is like one apartment building in New York City. Um, the, uh, as opposed to, we have more people than Mecklenburg County, which is Charlotte. Mecklenburg County has 1,500 cases, which is like twice as many cases, and 43 deaths, which is like three times as many deaths as we have in Raleigh, to show you how we're doing very nicely and we've done it right with social distancing, all that kind of stuff. Greensboro has 318 cases, 20 get deaths. We have 15 deaths and we're much bigger than 
uh, Guilford County, much more people, and they have 20 deaths. So we're doing things nicely. Now, for the United States, talking about people who are doing it poorly, the United States has uh, over, um, over a million cases as of today, which is unbelievable, and 58,000 deaths. Put that in perspective, that's more deaths than, than Vietnam. So, you know, here we were at war with Vietnam for all those years, everything else, we have more deaths already than the Vietnam War. And so, and to put that in a little bit of perspective, countries that have done it well, like Germany, Germany has uh, 6,280 uh, uh, 6, deaths. Uh, Australia, who's really done it well, but they have an easier job closing off their borders, are 88 deaths. Canada has 2,900 deaths. So the countries that have done it right, like South Korea, like um, uh, New Zealand, um, uh, uh, like Hong Kong, those countries, as what the history of this is, and I love history, the history of all this is, it started in China with uh, bats and all this stuff, and that's how it got to humans. And then in, that was sometime in the past, uh, they first found their first case in the middle of December. By December 30th though, China released the gene genetic pattern of the of the virus. So everybody, they released it on the internet, everybody in the world by December 30th had the genetic pattern so they could make uh, immunizations, they can make tests for it, everything else. Now, other countries like uh, South Korea, um, as I said, South Korea, New Zealand, uh, Hong Kong, went ahead at that point in time and started making tests and all this kind of stuff. We didn't put an effort, effort into this till the middle of March. So here it was, December 30th, when the information came out, the middle of March is when we started to recognize, okay, this is something dangerous, and that's why we're in so much trouble now. In Wake County, we started right away. Mecklenburg County started a few weeks after us, and it just shows you what a few weeks matter in the beginning of an of a epidemic. So, uh, so this is a huge thing that, that has happened. And what people seem to ask me about, the hot topic of today is testing and uh, and uh, uh, whether you get antibodies. So the testing thing is still, we still don't have enough tests. We still, our tests are less good than the rest of the world's tests for no good reason. And uh, except that our, our uh, government hasn't uh, done it the right way. And the, uh, and so, we're, we have a lot more cases and a lot less testing. And to put that in perspective, South Korea has tested over 10 times as many people, you know, per population than we have. And so, so we are way behind in the testing thing compared to the rest of the world who has done it well. The people who have not done it well is like Italy and the United States. These are the people who haven't done it well. And as a result, a lot of di lives have been lost, unfortunately. And so, so my, all right, so how do we, what do we do as people? So what we do as people, the three, the things you should remember about, the three things you should remember about the COVID-19 is first of all, wash your hands. So as much as you can, spend your time washing your hands. Number two is cough into your elbow. So you wanna cough into your elbow, not in your hands and all that kind of stuff. Number three is stay away from sick people. In other words, if something, somebody's around you, they're coughing, sneezing, you're at the supermarket, you're walking down the street, people are coughing, go to the other side of the street, go to a different aisle in the supermarket, whatever you need, stay away from people who are coughing and sneezing and, uh, and don't look well. So you wanna stay away from the sick people. And in countries like Sweden, what they did was just isolate people who weren't feeling well and did it that way instead of shutting down the whole, um, the whole country and that's helped but it has not helped as much as our neighbors in Denmark and all the other countries. Uh, they had much fewer numbers but it still is a good way to do it. Unfortunately 
people are still at what we should have done and we still should do is the hot spots in the United States we should be closing down. In other words, we should be closing the airports in New York City. We should be closing the train stations in New York City. Same with New Orleans, same with Los Angeles. The places where it's hot spots, that there's a lot of cases, you know, to let them fly all over the country, to let them get out, to let them uh, do whatever they want to do is just totally nutsy for the rest of the United States. And that's why it's spreading so much. And that's why we're in such bad shape. Other countries had leadership from the top and they cut, shut down the, the countries that did it right, had leadership from the top and they shut down their whole country. And uh, at least for a while, and they shut down a lot, lot lower, a lot less time than we are gonna be shut down just because they can stop it from the beginning and not wait till it's, uh, um, not wait, wait until the, you know, it's really affected a good part of the population. So that makes a, a huge difference in all this stuff. And the other thing is wear masks. And the article I read in, in uh, uh, November's uh, Journal of the AMA showed that it really doesn't matter what kind of mask you wear. All masks help, all masks work. When they really found it, real world experience, uh, the N95 mask did no better, no worse than every other mask. So, um, so Will, when you're out examining patients and all that, uh, wear your masks and all that, because that's important for you, for the patients, for everybody else, is uh, not to, and wash your hands frequently. That's the key to all this stuff of not spreading it around. And I've had, in North Raleigh, I've had, uh, we've done about 18 tests on our patients. So far, none of them have been positive, which is a wonderful thing. So uh, any questions you have about, about coronavirus? Doctor, so you, uh, this is uh, Gene Perry. Yeah, sure. Uh, one of my concerns was the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, the latency between you know, uh, uh, obtaining the virus and actually showing symptoms. I think they're saying two weeks now well, before that yeah. may happen. So nobody knows uh, the exact you know, uh, amount of time, but probably the best study was done from the Diamond Princess. That was the ship that was in the ocean and, and at the beginning of all this stuff. And they had a captive audience. They could measure how long it took. And so it was variable time. Some, caught, some did it in a couple, turned positive in a couple of days. Some took up to two weeks to turn positive. But the interesting thing about that was, and they, they found out how many people, you know, and then they were able to test, they had a captive audience so they can test everybody in the ship. And really uh, less than, I think it was probably about 1% of the people who are positive really got very sick and died and all that kind of stuff from the uh, Diamond Princess there. And so, um, and so, of the people who get very sick, probably the actual death rate is one or two percent, something like that, even though it makes the news and, and all this stuff. So it's hard to tell because the reason it's so difficult is because our testing is so poor and we don't have a good denominator of how many people really have it. But most people who really get it uh, do, do fine, you know, and, uh, you know, are not ending up in the hospital all that. So even if you think you might have it, it's not the time to go to the hospital, go to the emergency room, uh, all this kind of stuff, because the emergency rooms don't want you in the emergency room because they don't want you giving it to somebody else in the emergency room who has a laceration or, or something like that that's in the, for a different reason. So stay home. And now the question is, when, when do you want to go to the emergency room? And probably the time to go to the emergency room is your, if you're short of breath. And what I mean by short of breath, if you can't walk and talk at the same time, in other words, walk at normal speed and talk to somebody else while you're walking at normal speed, that's the time to go to the hospital. So walking and talking is an easy measure to find out, okay, you know, am I, am I really short of breath or am I not? And I always love low tech, examples. So walking and talking is, is when to do it. If you have a high fever and or if you have chest pain. If you're having chest pain, there's a higher incidence of uh, heart attacks and, and pulmonary emboli and blood clots and everything else in the COVID-19 people. If you're having chest pain, all that kind of stuff, that's the time you need to go to the hospital. 
But say you're just having cold-like symptoms, and the problem is with COVID also, is the symptoms are the same symptoms as every other virus that you and I get. In other words, it's it's cough, fever, sore throat, achy muscles, um, uh, headaches, uh, fatigue, muscle aches, all this kind of stuff. So those are the, just the general things. There's nothing that really separates this from other viruses at all. Any other questions about the COVID stuff? Hi, this is Rhonda. I um, joined late, but just yeah, wanted to right. comment. Um, yeah, it was interesting how they had just two or three symptoms, and now we've gotten up to, I think, six or more symptoms. So like you said, it looks like the flu, but um, it's interesting uh, to hear about the antibiotics. So even yeah. though this isn't something that's been around, um, can you talk to the antibiotics? Because now I'm hearing that's the test we want so that we know who had it and fought it, and now they can definitely get back out and work and so on. Right. And so uh, two problems with the antibodies. One, and all day I get this same question. I don't think there's any patient that comes to my office who doesn't ask me about antibodies. So the answer to this is, first of all, our tests are not readily available. They're not very good. And nobody knows what it means. So that's the things that are against it is the tests aren't there, aren't available, aren't good, and nobody knows what it means. So in other words, if you're thinking you should have this, and almost everybody is interested in getting this done because they want to make sure they, you know, either they recovered from it or don't have it. And so the wait a month or two, I think in a month or two, our tests are going to get much better. Our uh, our ability to know what this means is going to get a lot better. So just wait. And I said, I, I don't have much faith in the tests that are out right now. And they're not very uh, sp specific. Um, and uh, they're not, I don't think they're great tests. So wait a couple months. There will be great tests out there and it'll be much better. So uh, as far as that, and nobody knows whether you can get it more than once. So nobody knows whether having antibodies really protects you in the long run or not, or what it all means. So uh, that's the bad part of antibodies. And, but in a month or two, I think it'll be much better. Any other questions you have about it? Dr. Yeah. Could, sure, Richard. Could I ask a question? quick question? Sure. Getting back to, uh, to testing, um, I mean, testing, of course, uh, we, you, you mentioned the, the numbers, I think, of, of tests, and that's, that's a hot button issue that we're not testing enough. Right. Uh, and then there's the quality, whether or not it's catching you know, the antibodies, not antibodies, blah, blah, blah. Right. But getting to, the, to, to another aspect that I don't think gets quite as much press, but does scare a lot of people, is um, the type of, um, of tests that they're getting. I think it was, it must have been Brad Pitt on SNL the other day who was talking about this and he said some, something to the, I, I didn't, didn't really listen but too well, but he said something like, yeah, the test, you stick a, what, what's the big deal? You stick a cotton swab up, up a person's nose and then tickle his brain. It's the tickle his brain thing that scares a lot of people about testing. Right. Now, I know that there, is, there, there have been some, uh, some improvements made in the various types of testing. Uh, can you, do you have any information about where we stand right now? If, if someone goes in for a test, is he likely to get the tickle his brain uh, test, which is a little, a, a little bit uncomfortable, no, more than a little bit uncomfortable? Or is, is he or she likely to get something that's a little bit more, more comfortable, let's say. It's, it's, it, it, I've heard that these tests now, you can just really touch the tip of the, of the, uh, the, the, the this area um, of the nose and not, not go into the nose. Uh, and there are various improvements that have been made that make it less fearsome. Do you know anything about the tests and where we stand right so, now? So yeah, yes. So the test, the swab that we use to test is about this long. So, uh, and, uh, and Will probably knew this, but I didn't even know this before all this started. I didn't even know how far back 
you could put something before I started doing these. I mean, this, this thing, I thought it was going to come out of the back of the head when I started doing these tests. I mean, it's just amazing how far you can put this thing up a nose and, and go how far back you can go. And so, and needless to say, uh, my patients, I mean, they, there's nobody I've done it on that hasn't come in asking for it, but they, um, uh, they don't, uh, afterwards, they don't appreciate my fine effort a lot of times of, of doing this stuff. And so, and, but that's where the virus is. The virus is, and the same thing with uh, whooping cough. You, the, you have to do that with whooping cough too. You have to get all the way to the back for whooping cough for this virus. That's where the virus hangs out, is all the way in the back there. And that's why it's important. But to get to your question, Richard, no, I don't think that's the future. The future is getting your fingers stuck, get a drop or two of blood, like you do a blood sugar or something like that. That's gonna tell us both whether you have it now and whether, uh, whether you have antibodies to it. And so this, this one test is gonna tell it all that's the future. You're going to get your fingers stuck like you, as if you're a diabetic, and that's going to give you all the answers. And so I think that's where it's going to go and with the testing. So when you and so that's much, much more humane, everything else, and I won't have to worry about going back in the back of the brain. How, thank you. Well, how, how far in the future is that, do you think? Is it, uh, is it a month or a year? Is it, is oh, I, well, the test, there are tests of this already out. They just haven't been approved by the CDC is, is my understanding of it all. And I, so, so soon, I think. But I, they're, before they're widely available, as you say, it's going to be probably months and, you know, uh, before because they have to mass produce all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I think there'll be some tests out very soon. But uh, is, is will it be uh, what we need are tests for screening. In other words, going to a whole population like they're down on the on the uh, uh, on the cruise ship, go in the whole population, find out, okay, where is this? All right, say they test Raleigh, nobody in Raleigh has has, you know, has active disease, all this kind of stuff. They can open up Raleigh. You know, there's no reason why restaurants shouldn't open up all that kind of stuff. And then they go to Charlotte and say, whoa, look at all the disease here. They can shut down Charlotte and say, whoa, there's a, a lot of disease here. You know, yeah. keep the people in Charlotte and Charlotte and just stop the train from Charlotte to Raleigh and, um, uh, you know, and we can go from there, you know, and this will have the answers. But um, if we don't have the testing, we can't we can't give them the answers. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any any other questions I, people have? I actually it? heard that that test, the prick test that, like you said, it looks like the diabetic test that yeah. is actually in. Um, Japan, a lot of countries in Europe, and our FDA has registered it or registered for it, but I think it still has a long process to get through. But I was told they can't give it out to individuals, but they can actually give it to hospitals. Whereas other countries, individuals take those, as a self-test, uh, individuals take. But the um, in the US, only hospitals are allowed to have them. But it, like you said, it's not mass produced or it's not right. readily available here yet. Right. And so that's what has to happen. It has to be mass produced. It has to be readily available. And, and that's that, you know, and it's just that we got such a late start on all this. Now, people usually ask me about the future, you know, about the fall, all that kind of stuff. What's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen when we you know, stop the social social isolation, when we stop the um, uh, social uh, distancing, all that stuff. And what'll happen then is yes, there'll be a little blip up. So yes, there'll be a blip up in the number of cases when we do that, but there has to be. We can't stay socially, uh, social distancing forever. In other words, um, Kathy needs to get her hair done at some point in time. And so, uh, so and it'll probably be done in phases. And so phase one will be Kathy getting her hair done. I think that's number one, because the thing that everybody complains about that I know of, including Will there, is not being able to get to the barber shop, not being able to get to the beauty parlor, and uh, not being able to get their nails done, everything else, you know, like Lonnie. And, uh, and so all these things, uh, you know, 
that will open up first because it's easy to have social distancing there, everything else, and that should open up first. Then, you know, then small churches, then larger churches. I think it'll be a long time before at NC State, uh, uh, UNC, the basketball games, football games will be open to the public, though. You know, uh, having that many people together in one place and all that, I think that's going to take months and months before, uh, before that's all opened up. But, but there, that doesn't mean you can't go to a restaurant, can't go to, with social distancing, you can't go to uh, your beauty parlor, can't get your nails done, can't, and businesses can't start working again and all that stuff. So I think it'll be graduated, but, but it should start. I think the governor said uh, May 8th is when uh, the, the present situation is going on. I think after May 8th, they should be gradually opening things up so, can, so Kathy can get to the beauty parlor. That so, be so, Dr. Adolin, I, I, I got a technique question. Sure. And I'm applying the keep it simple rule, right? Yeah, right. You just mentioned, and, and I hear everybody talk about sneezing into your sleeve, okay? Right. I carry that sleeve with me all day. I pick up my little baby. Why wouldn't it be better for me to sneeze in my hand and wash? Okay. Versus because, carrying that around with me all day. Because you're not touching anybody with your sleeve. Uh, don't hug people. Don't. Don't put your sleeve on anybody. And as long as you don't touch anybody with your sleeve, you're a lot more likely to touch a doorknob, touch a, uh, uh, touch a sink, touch a faucet, touch a whatever else, uh, toilet thing with your hand than you are your sleeve. So your sleeve, you're not gonna touch anything with. With your hands, you're gonna touch everything with. Okay. Way, you touch your face, you're gonna to touch the rest of your body with your, with your hand, you're gonna to touch everything with your sleeve, you're not gonna to touch these different parts. Okay, so you know that I'm a hard sale when it comes to vaccination. And you know, I, you, you talked me into taking the flu shot, and I, I've taken it. Right. Do you think that we're gonna have a hard sale when and if it ever appears a vaccine? And do you think that it's in our near future that we'll have a vaccine? And I think uh, it'll take a while to get a vaccine. In other words, for AIDS, they've been working on AIDS for the last whatever, 30, 40 years for vaccines, still don't have it. Malaria, they've been working on forever for a malaria vaccine. And Gates Foundation's put millions and millions of dollars into this, still don't have it. So vaccines are not easy. And uh, people think, oh, you, you have the virus, you should be able to get a vaccine. No, we have no vaccines against the common cold. You know, they've been working on that forever. So vaccines are kind of tough, but treatments, we should have much better treatments and we should know what the, how the treatments work. So I think we'll be way ahead on treatments. The vaccine's a, a different story. Now, as Lonnie brought up, one of my passions in life and what I, the reason why I started the health fair at our temple that we had for 25 years was to distribute and give everybody who wanted them flu shots and poor people, we gave them for free, following in, what's, in what Will was saying about uh, helping the world. And one year we had 800 people at uh, Beth Orr Temple that we gave uh, flu shots to and everything else one year. To put the flu thing in perspective, uh, in uh, uh, last year we had 45,000 deaths. The year before that, we had 80,000 deaths in the United States from the flu. So, so far in coronavirus, we've had 58,000 deaths from coronavirus here. But two years ago, we had 80,000 deaths of the flu, and there's flu shots on every corner. You can't pass a Walgreens, CVS, whatever else, without saying it, uh, uh, without them trying to get you in to get a flu shot. So, my message to all of you is, come the fall, make sure to get a flu shot. It's crazy that we have 80,000 people in America dying of flu when there's a shot that can help prevent it. And so, yes, you should get a flu shot. Yes, when you're sick, stay home, don't go to work with the flu. And the difference between the flu and other viruses, just so you know, is the flu, when a patient comes in with the flu, they tell me, I was well at four o'clock this afternoon, at 4.10 in the afternoon, I was having shaking chills. I could hardly walk to the bathroom and I felt terrible. That's the difference. Whereas patients coming with a cold, they say, oh, last two or three days, I wasn't feeling so well. And then I got this cough and then I felt you know, kind of tired and all that kind of stuff. So the flu starts boom, whereas these other things are more gradual onset. 
So yes, get a flu shot. And while we're talking about immunizations, for those over 65, they should have pneumonia shots too. The pneumonia shot's good. And, uh, and then what people also ask me about is the shingle shot. And for those over, I start giving that and people over 60, for the shingle shot, and shingles are miserable, people don't really but die of shingles very often, but they're miserable with it if they get it when they're uh, mature, what I call mature adults. Okay, that means older than Will. Um, and so uh, and so I start giving it at 60 because I want it when they're 70 or 80 years old that it's still there and potent and all that kind of stuff, the shingle shot. And, and people ask me, there's a new shingle shot that I like. The old, for those of you who had the old shingle shot, I'm not really recommending the new shingle shot yet until they do tests on it and people who have the, who have had the old shot, which they haven't done any tests on it yet. And so if you haven't had, if you're over 60, haven't had a shingle shot, you should get this with the new shot. If you had one in the past with the old shot, do that. Real quick, the last question about the vaccinations. So, of course, a lot of us don't want to sign up for the first one that comes out for Corona. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'll wait till the next batch comes out and then I'll do it. Um, but if we, I regularly get the flu shot. If I do, is that some warding of, is that maybe why some of us haven't gotten Corona because we readily get the flu shot? I mean, is that any aid to keeping from getting Corona? Yeah, similar I think the flu shot does help boost immunity. It helps you other things. In other words, when you look at the flu season, you see who had heart attacks, who had strokes, who had a bunch of other things. All that's lower in people who had flu shots. So I think flu shots do help a number of different things. I think it does help boost immunity and all this stuff. And yes, I would get the, when the coronavirus shot comes out, I would get it. It fills my criteria of a lot of people getting sick from it and dying from it. Now there's other shots that I'm not as, as fond of who people don't die of and those, you know, or don't it make people very, very sick. And so uh, those are not my favorites. But this is. But let me finish with a couple of things. So we only have a couple minutes left. First of all, what all rotaries I always like to tell them about in, in my lecture A to Z, my A was apples. Okay, now why is this relevant? Okay, my, one of my favorite studies in the last couple of years was I have all kinds of people that come to me with sexual problems. And usually before coronavirus, now that's on everybody's mind. In the past, sex was on everybody's mind. So the ant, one of my favorite studies of all time, they found out that one apple a day helped people have uh, more interest in sex and better performance. Two apples a day did even better. So if you get nothing else out of this lecture, one or two apples a day, if your sexual performance is not what you want it to be, okay? So you can remember that. But let me finish with what I started with this is the answers always Fruits, vegetables, exercise, and love. And that's what helps people. That's what helps your sex life. That what helps every other part of your life. Coronavirus, let me remind you of the three things. Wash your hands frequently. The more you wash your hands, the better because you touch everything with your hands. Number two is cough into your elbow. You don't touch your elbow on other things. You do touch your hands on other things. And number three, stay away from sick people. If somebody comes around you, they're sick, I don't care how important they are, Tell them to get out of there. So you don't want to be around sick people. Uh, and so, but thanks so much for inviting me. Yes, I see new patients all the time. Yes, I answer questions all the time. Lonnie knows how to get in touch with me. I'm in North Raleigh and it's a pleasure to talk to your group. You have a great group. And Kathy, so, thanks so much for inviting me. Well, thank you, Dr. Edelman, for just a wonderful presentation. And I'd like to go ahead and share my screen, if I may. And... I'd like to say, Dr. Edelman, thank you so much for um, being with us this evening. And we'd like to present to you, uh, on behalf of the Rotary E-Club of District 7710, this virtual certificate of appreciation 
uh, for imparting valuable insights and inspiration as our guest speaker this evening, April 28, 2020. So thank you so much. We really, really appreciated um, you being with us this evening. And I would love to have our newest member of the club, um, Will Seymour, read the four-way test this evening. Will? All right. Uh, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thanks, Will. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We are going to stop recording. And um, 